the 50s and 60s and early 70s when, when psychologists were really researching and getting to learn more about attachment. There was a woman um, researcher named Mary Ainsworth who uh, is often considered the mother of the attachment field. Uh, John Bowlby is considered the father of the attachment field. So together they, they contributed a lot. And um, Mary Ainsworth said that the fundamental mm, factor that contributes to attachment security in an infant and young child is what she called maternal responsiveness. So the responsiveness of the mother or the caregiver to the child. And then she described what that can include. And over the years, uh, people, other people in the field have specified and clarified what what the components of, of best possible maternal responsiveness might be. And, I, and again, it's maternal, it could be paternal, it could be you know, any, any, any caregiver for, for a young child. What I and my colleagues have developed is uh, a, a version of mm, describing that maternal responsiveness category. Uh, uh, and, and we've broken it down into five, what we call five conditions that promote secure attachment. Uh, and I'll, I'll describe those now because they're pretty simple to, to recognize and to understand. And if the parent recognizes and understands them, then he or she can really practice them. And one thing that's really helpful to know for any parent is that if they're consciously and deliberately trying to apply these principles in their parenting, doing that actually can help their own attachment security as well. Okay? So, so by helping their child in a conscious way, they're also helping themselves. And by helping themselves, they're helping their, their child. So it's a nice feedback loop. It's a, you know, it, it, everybody benefits from it. So the first primary condition that promotes secure attachment is called um, well, it, it involves protection. Okay, there are two components to each of these five conditions. One is what the child feels in relation to the caregiver. And the other is what the caregiver does or the ways of being that the caregiver is that contributes to the child feeling uh, something in particular. So we want a child to feel safe in connection with the caregiver. That's fundamental to security. Uh, and how does a child feel safe in connection with the caregiver? Caregiver is protective. Okay? The caregiver tries to watch for what's going on with the child and what's going on around the child and tries to be protective whenever the child is under threat or feels unsafe in some way. When that happens over and over again to a good enough degree, Again, it doesn't have to be 100%. It can't be 100% because nobody's perfect. Um, if it happens to a good enough degree, then the child feels safe in connection with the caregiver and comes to internalize an experience and a belief that when something is threatening me, mommy or daddy will be there and will protect me and help me stay safe. So that's number one. Number two is, um, when the parent is attuned to the child. Now attunement means recognizing what's going on with the child, like being able to understand what the facial expression might mean. If a, facial, if a, if a, if a scrunched face means hungry or gas or, or uh, a soiled diaper, you know, the, the, the parent comes to be interested enough in the child that he or she learns uh, what the signals are, learns uh, how to tune in and be responsive to what the child's needs are. So responsive, attuned to the inner state of the child, attuned to the behavior of the child. Um, those are very, very important for the child feeling seen and feeling known, feeling recognized. The better attuned a parent will be toward the child, the more that child will experience being, that, being known, being seen. Oh, mommy knows me. Oh, okay. You know, he or she is responsive. That's, that's um, uh, 
uh, fundamental to maternal responsiveness to uh, attachment security. So the third would be um, the, the parent providing soothing and comforting when the child is upset. And if the parent is able to provide some good enough soothing and comforting when the child is in distress or upset, the child will feel will will feel like soothing is available anytime upset comes up. That connects to the emotion regulation experience that I, and process that I talked about earlier. So, so the third condition is feeling soothed and comforted whenever upset. And of course, the parental behavior that promotes that is being soothed. I mean, doing soothing when the child is upset. Child has the parent has to be attuned enough to the child to recognize that he or she is upset in order to provide the soothing. So these conditions tend to be in combination with each other. They're not very, they're not separate all the time. The fourth condition that promotes secure attachment is when the child when the parent is is delighted by the child. The, the, the parent is very happy to be with the child. Again. It's not going to be 100%. No parent can be happy to be with the child all of the time. Children can be annoying sometimes. It's difficult to be a parent. But if more often than not, the child experiences the parent as delighted or happy to be in connection with, the, with, with him or her, then the child starts to feel valued. Like, oh, mommy, daddy, they're happy. They smile when they're with me. I must be important. I must be a good child, I must be valuable. And that contributes to self-esteem. Okay? It, it contributes to secure attachment and it's a, something that drives inner self-development and self-esteem development. So the last condition that promotes secure attachment is when the, when the parent encourages exploration and discovery. The, the parent is confident in the child's uh, ability to try things out, to explore, um, and the child feels supported to do that. The child feels encouraged and feels like there's a safe ground from which to explore the world. Okay, So ideally, as the child gets more secure, the child will start to move away from the parent and kind of look around and experiment and try new toys or play with little animals or whatever it might be. And then if the child gets afraid, feels unsafe, he or she knows that the parent will be there so the child can come back to the parent and the parent provides comforting and soothing or protection if that's needed from a place of attunement to what the, is going on with the child. And the parent is delighted that the child is trying new things out. Okay. So those are the five what we call primary conditions that promote secure attachment. There are other, other researchers and therapists, psychologists have talked about, have used different words to describe some of these things. But overall, this is the, these are the kinds of behaviors and ways of being that parents uh, have that tend to promote secure attachment. I should add, just add briefly, um, all, of, all of these five conditions um, are supported by the parent having basic interest in the child, okay? Like interest in paying attention to the child. So presence and, and availability and interest are also fundamental and foundational for, as the ground for these five conditions to, to, be, uh, to be brought into the parenting and into the dynamic. When I talked about delight in the child as one of the five conditions that promote secure attachment, um, ideally, the parent will be delighted in the child for the child simply being who he or she is, not only what the child does. Okay, so obviously a parent can be happy if the child, you know, does something successfully. You know, an older child, when a child gets a good grade in school, the child, the parent can be very, very happy. But it's important the child come to feel valued, not just for what he or she does, not just for accomplishing, for being successful, but that the child is valued 
as just an individual, as a unique and distinct individual child and person. Uh, so uh, it, it, we, we call this support for being rather than only doing. So the child comes to feel valued for being who he or she is, not only for what he or she does. So that's another, another little tip, I would say. Thank you.